tour we're talking about is in uh, North Devon, and uh, it's based on the um, the, the, the town of uh, small town of Woolacombe uh, on the west coast there, um, just by Woolacombe Bay, and um, we uh, visit most of the a lot of the coastline and uh, the um, stunning range of habitats we've got here. You know, rocky cliffs, huge sand dune systems, and um, an undeveloped estuary of uh, two significant rivers, the Tor and the Torridge, and coastal moorland and a bit of Exmoor National Park, which features uh, temperate rainforest. And uh, there's also good freshwater grazing marsh and salt marsh. It's all part of the UNESCO biosphere for North Devon, which is the first biosphere in the UK. And it's all uh, in an area of outstanding natural beauty as well. So quite a diverse range of habitats. Um, it's based in in uh, Woolacombe, which really is a is a little town that hasn't changed much in uh, in uh, 50, 60 years. It would look exactly the same that view if you took it, you know, just after the last war, which is rather nice. It's all, all the landscape is protected by national trust, and uh, we have uh, our base is at uh, the magnificent Woolacombe Bay Hotel, which is four star has. Uh, um, large grounds right right on in the dunes tucked up in the dunes and right on the water's edge um, both indoor and outdoor swimming pools and of course the sea if you want to swim in it and a spa and very good brasserie style restaurant that we use and they give us a, a little private area there which is is great um the first evening we go out onto the um onto the dunes at willicombe warren um with the national trust and um that's uh, always very popular. It's a very good way of meeting people and after an early dinner. We have a couple of hours looking at uh, what the National Trust have done on the, on the dunes to reduce the bramble and um, scrub and encourage wildflowers. And they use this pioneering electronic cattle grazing system where the cattle have collars and they're restricted in the areas they can graze without trashing the whole, the whole area in the winter. And that's resulted in some great stands of, of wildflowers, including these pyramidal orchids and the usual uh, birds for trefoil and rest harrow and yellow rattle and so on. And then you've even got bee orchids starting to appear in the marron grass in the dunes. And it's uh, usually pretty near midsummer. So, um, you know, it's still full daylight at, uh, at nine o'clock at night, 9.30. So um, really nice uh, way into the, into the tour. And then the next day we go over to um, uh, Braunton and uh, look at Braunton Burrows, which is one of the UK's largest uh, dune systems. Um, it's over 900 hectares and about three miles by one mile. And um, it, it's been subject to a five year um, EU funded dynamic dunescapes project, which has created these areas of bare sand and removed a lot of invasive scrub, things like um, um, sea buckthorn and um, and uh, and uh, bramble and so on. And that's been encouraging sand lizards and lots of species of flowering plant, including the orchids and, and the brown banded cardaby, which is uh, becoming more and more common there, which is nice. Um, we use um, the services of Mary Breeds, she's in the top left hand picture there in the in the red top. She's been in the area for over 40 years and she's written the, the authoritative guide to uh, the burrows. Um, about 600 species of flowering plant, including 11 orchids uh, have been recorded and five of those are widespread. So we would very like to see pyramidal, southern marsh, early marsh, tway blade and marsh helleborine. And uh, here's a fragrant orchid, which is uh, part of that 11. And it's also pretty good for butterflies uh, on its day. So dark green fritillaries and brown argus can be seen. Um, and there's large areas of, uh, of dune turf with um, birds for trefoil, thyme and ladies bed straw, yellow rattle and so on. And the sand pansy, which is a, a favorite, little tiny viola tricolor. Um, but some of the rarities, some true rarities in uh, Braunton are the water germander, which is only found in Braunton Burrows and Northern Burrows, so just the other side of the river, and one other site in Cambridgeshire, I believe. So pretty rare, but usually flowers a bit later than our tour. Our tour runs in uh, the end of June. 
So this flower is usually later in July or August. So we don't often see that. And then but the other rarity that's quite uh, spectacular is the sea stock, which is a lovely um, colored, violet colored pink, violet colored plant in the in the dunes. And that's only found in North Devon and on the Southwest Wales coast. And we also have the, the round headed club rush, which I don't have a shot of, unfortunately, but it's a very spiky rush with uh, with club heads of flowers. Just a, in a few sites of Braunton Burrows is the stronghold and the uh, marbled white, another example of the fair common butterflies that you can see here. Then the day uh, three, we're off to Hedden Valley in Exmoor, which is a north facing valley, which features this um, spectacular temperate rainforest down its sides. And these have been made uh, quite better, much better known by Guy Shrubsole in a recent book that he wrote about it. It's mainly oak and ash. And amazingly, it was planted. It was, it was planted by man in the last, uh, well, the 19th and 20th, early 20th century. Um, so it's not, um, you know, it's not hit, um, uh, virgin forest it, by any means. It's very managed, but the uh, wonderful trees that have resulted, the stunted growth with covered in moss and epiphytes and so on, um, is really nice to look at. And Aviva have just given £50 million of funding for restoring this kind of habitat in the UK. And quite a lot of that's coming to Devon. Again, National Trust managed, as is nearly the whole coast along uh, De North Devon. And we uh, we borrow Jack Ward, our, our fantastic National Trust uh, head ranger and a great ecologist. And he talks about the rewilding work they, they're doing, just letting trees fall over and uh, allowing... Uh, um, boughs to fall off and split and provide places for bats to roost in and so on. Whereas before the National Trust would have managed it much more tightly and, and um, neatly. And now they're all enjoying the fact that, that they can let let uh, nature rip, as it were. They're even planning to, to get beaver in and, and even water buffalo in the future to help with the rewilding uh, um, activities. So fantastic place and good for butterflies in the valley floor and on the on the uh, south facing side so you can see three different fritillaries silver washed high brown small pearl borders the high brown high brown being the, uh, the highlight that's only uh, only seen in um, this area and a few others in the UK quite a quite a scarce butterfly and, and nice dragonflies golden ring there and a green hair streak too so it's a one mile walk down to the sea and we will see uh, guillemots razor bills from the from the colony just adjacent on the cliffs at Woody Bay. And we come back and have lunch at the fantastic uh, Hunter's Inn um, and um, really good pub food. And then we go up the valley and look for lesser horseshoe bats in in the church at Trentishoe and uh, search out the high brown fertilities up the valley sides. Um, so quite a, a nice day. Then day four is is a whole day trip to Lundy, which uh, was an early start uh, with 6.30 a.m. breakfast. Um, departure from Biddeford gives um, six hours ashore. And uh, we again use a local expert, Martin Unwin, great birder. And uh, we have a two hour ferry journey and um, that's great for sea watching. So you see um, porpoise dolphins, commonly um, common dolphins, uh, gannets passing by from from Pembrokeshire, guillemots and puffins, and manxes and seals, all of which uh, are present on on Lundy itself. It's a steep climb up to the village um, to uh, the Morisco Tavern and the church. Morisco Tavern's great pasties and really good for. Uh, lunches and we've dived in there a few times when it's been wet which occasionally it is in Devon I have to say but um, usually it doesn't last too long it's uh, uh, the, the weather moves on pretty quick and the the lovely old stone walls on, on Lundy are very popular with the uh, the northern wheat ears that are, that are very much in evidence at that time of year and we even see things like um, um, from the boat, we'll, we've seen summer plumage, plumage uh, great northern divers this far south. 
and um, Manx Shearwaters, which is a very large uh, colony. When, when we um, reach the top, after quite a steep climb from the boat, we head off to the west coast to Jenny's Cove, where is the main the main sea colony, uh, sea bird colony is, and you might either have seen see dolphins from the cliffs or a minty whale there from the we saw from the boat. Um, but the main attraction is the um, for everybody wants to see a puffin when they go there, and we we increasingly seeing great uh, increases. So if I tell you that um, when uh, there were rats on the island. So 2001, there were 13 puffins on, on Lundy. It was right down to that. And last year, there were 1,335. So a, a thousandfold increase in um, in puffins in, in uh, just over 20 years. So fantastic uh, results from that. And that's also resulted in um, things like 25,000 Manx shearwaters, where 95% of the UK population, breeding population, uh, come come from Lundy, so it's amazing what that uh, program has done. So Lundy is a real conservation success story, and it's really heartwarming to to see what's happened there. Of course, it was also the first uh, UK no take zone or marine conservation zone, as it's called. So a very very special place, and you know it seems uh, you can do a, a nature trek tour and have uh, I think th four nights on Lundy, but that's a different tour. This is just a taster, and and I think a lot of people will want to come back um, when they've seen it. A very special place indeed. Then the final um, morning, we uh, we do a walk along Mort Point, which is where the Bristol Channel meets the um, meets the Atlantic Ocean. You just see Lundy there on the horizon, on the left hand side. So Lundy is about uh, uh, twenty one miles off the point there. Um, and you have, because of its situation, you have these upwellings of nutrients from the channel, meaning there's lots of fish. Um, there's a small uh, seal group gather, gathers there in the summertime. And um, we get great views of them because they're, we're looking down at them from, from up on the cliff. And um, we again, we have a local guy, Dave Jenkins, who, who has been ill, but he's uh, hoped, hoped to join us again next year. Um, and he's uh, found a, for the last few years the nesting site of a pair of kestrels and wonderful views of the juveniles they're just about to fledge um so the whole um landscape there is again grazed by these lovely belted galloway cows that are are um um restrained by by their gps collars where the farmer can program on his iPad where the exactly where the cattle go and where they can't. So uh, a lovely uh, end to the tour and we have uh, lunch in the uh, shipper ground pub and uh, depart from, from North Devon. So moving swiftly on we then have our tour in um, Cornwall which is feet on the, the southernmost part of the UK mainland. We've gone from seeing Earlier on, we've seen the northern part of the, uh, the whole UK island chain, but this is the very south point of the UK because the Channel Islands actually aren't in the UK, I've, I've learned when I lived there. So the hotel there is um, marked with that heart at um, near Falworth and um, very, very comfortable place. And we venture out daily from there. So great food again, um, lovely setting with a view of the, uh, of the English Channel and uh, in its own grounds and very close to Falmouth. So that's a super location and good food too. Um, so the first day on the tour I was leaving, I've only led one tour that I was standing in, but we went off to the Lizard and walked some of the coastal path, Hynans Cove and, and Gunwallow, looking for um, the... Um, the species on the title of the tour, the uh, the, the the chuff, and uh, the Cornish chuff. So we uh, took some time to find them because, and in fact, we we were quite lucky because we found a pair on the actually 
actually feeding amongst the hot and top fig, which of course is an invasive species, which covers large areas of the cliffs um, and badly needs to be managed, but uh, the chuff seem to like it anyway. And they're really acrobatic um, birds when, when they're flying around in a breeze um, with these wonderful evocative calls and they're Cornwall's county bird. But in fact, they died out in the county in 1973 and um, three birds became resident again back in uh, 2001 and of those a, a pair formed and they nested in 2002 and uh, raised some chicks by last year um, 112 chicks have been fledged from 39 nests so it's a really good story about um, again conservation at work and there's a dedicated team led by RSPB um, that has uh, helped them along because they, they need special grazing uh, length of turf that, that uh, they need to be able to fossick around with that wonderful long bill for earthworms and grubs and stuff. All a bit precarious because most of those birds are descended from that original pair, but um, never mind, they're making great, great headway. So the next day we go off to uh, Woodland Valley Farm, which is at uh, Laddock, which is about... Um, an hour away from the hotel, just north of Truro. And we um, learn all about conservation farming and uh, organic farming, conservation grazing, things like mob, mob grazing, where the herd is um, restrained by electric fences and it grazes a specific area for just a day, and then it's moved on again. So th the ground doesn't get poached or trampled too much. and any wildflowers that are starting to 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 grow aren't aren't absolutely trashed, and that's that seems to be working really well for them. They've got these areas of wood pasture now that they're working on very hard. And the beavers, um, Chris Jones, who owns the farm, has introduced beavers into a um, enclosure, which is the only legal way you can do it. Um, and it's about a kilometre of fencing in, enclosing. You're not aware of it being an enclosure at all. Um, you can't usually see them in the daytime, which is that when that picture of the beaver dam was taken. We're shown around the enclosure in the daytime. And then we go off and have a really good pub supper at the Falmouth Arms in Laddock and come back at about 8.30. And the beavers come out as it gets uh, towards dusk at about nine. And uh, we have really good views of them swimming around. They like to cruise around the lakes they've they built. Um, before they, they settle down and start uh, preening and, and so on. And, and then as it gets dark, that's when they do these massive felling activities and trees come crashing down. They're real landscape engineers and it's fascinating to see what they've done. And it's actually has already had an impact on flooding in the village of Ladock, which is great. And uh, hence Chris is now more popular than he was at bringing beavers back to the landscape. So that's really, Great, um, great day. And another day out is on a boat, a pelagic boat trip from Falmouth um, with Keith Leaves, who's uh, been running, running boats for 25, 30 years. And he's just got a brand new catamaran um, in the last year. I, I led the tour in 2022 and he still had this monohull um, and um, he had this uh, young student aboard who had the sharpest pairs, pair of eyes that I have ever come across. He really was amazing at spotting stuff. So he would, would see that great northern diver from about half a mile away. And uh, he was invaluable to have on board. So we thought, saw things like that again in, in the summer plumage, um, which is quite unusual to find in, in the English Channel at that time of year. And the gannets come cruising by from my old uh, stomping ground of Alderney about 60 miles away and we then we head out about seven or eight miles out into the channel so we really are getting into the deeper parts of the English Channel um, and um, we we'll, we were joined by a, a school of common dolphins but I know that Oliver uh, who led this tour last year he, he was lucky enough to see not only common but also short beaks and um, Risso's dolphin as well on the same trip so Fantastic. We only saw that one one species of cetacean, but there are plenty more out there. 
then we head back in in towards Dobman Point, which is to some way to the east of Falmouth to make it a circuit and find the seabird colonies. So these are shags on the top left hand corner and uh, into Gull Rock, which is a great place, an island just off um, the coast where grey seals are uh, fishing and um, really good colony of um, guillemots and razorbills you can get close up to and um, not to be outdone we've had bridal guillemots on every uh, tour so far but we can do them as well so that's uh, nice to see them there too so that's my uh, my two tours from the west country